What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to show you how to take an old desktop like this one and transform it into a fully fledged gaming PC. In this video I'm going to talk about the parts you'll need to upgrade a system like this and how to install each of the parts. Though before I get any further into the video I want to give a big shout out and thanks to DiscountPC.com for sending out most of the hardware used in this video. You can hear about them more later in the video or check them out in the link in the description down below. They offer a large selection collection of refurbished computers that you can configure exactly for your needs. So let's take a minute and talk about what kind of system you should be upgrading. Right now, the best value for the money systems are desktops based off the LGA 1155 socket with 2nd gen core processors. Sure, you could use older stuff like Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad based systems, but if you're wanting to do any sort of modern 1080p gaming, going with an LGA 1155 based system like this one is your best bet. This Dell Optiplex 790 is the perfect candidate for an upgrade as it's got plenty of space for lots of hardware, a decent upgrade path, and has an OEM Windows key that comes with it. In its current configuration, it has an i3-2100, 4GB of RAM, a non-gaming ready power supply, and a 250GB mechanical hard drive. I'm going to go over each of these parts one by one and talk about suitable replacements and talk about how to change them out. The first thing to talk about is the CPU. Right now, the system has an i3 the i3-2100 is great for esports gaming and light 1080p AAA gaming if you're willing to turn down some settings and live with lower frame rates. For stuff like Overwatch, CSGO, and Rocket League, the CPU's fine, but there are a few different options to upgrade that provide a lot more performance. The sweet spot for a system like this is going with an i5. The i5-2400 or 2500 are great options for 1080p gaming, even in modern titles. The CPU I'm going to be putting in is the i5-2400. 2500, which is a quad-core CPU with four threads that can turbo up to a respectable 3.7 GHz. This gives you double the cores of the i3 and will provide a much better gaming experience. Keep in mind, going up to an i7-2600 is also an option if you're wanting the absolute most performance out of your system and can hold up surprisingly well when paired with a mid to high-end modern GPU. Changing a CPU can seem like a daunting task to someone who's new to PC hardware, but honestly it's a pretty easy process and takes a only a minute or two. You do this by first unscrewing all four corners of the CPU cooler and flipping the CPU cooler over to reveal the CPU itself and the underside of the cooler. The first thing I like to do is wipe off all the old thermal paste from the CPU and cooler with an alcohol soaked paper towel or rag. Once this is done and you have your replacement CPU on hand ready to go, you simply push down and out on the socket retention arm and lift up to open the socket. You then grab the old CPU only handling it by its edges and remove it. Bring the new CPU to the socket and line the marked corner of the CPU with the marked corner of the socket and lower it into place applying no pressure. You can give the CPU a little wiggle to make sure it's seated properly, then close the socket in the reverse order of how you opened it. At this point you'll need to apply a new application of thermal paste, any reputable brand of thermal compound will work fine, and simply put a piece-sized amount on the center of the CPU IHS. Then, lower the cooler back into place and screw the cooler back down in a cross pattern to ensure an equal distribution of pressure across the CPU. Once this is done, your new CPU is installed. Keep in mind, if you don't want to upgrade the CPU yourself, you can always order a system with your desired CPU already installed. Now let's talk about RAM. One good thing about going with a system like this is the fact that secondhand DDR3 is much cheaper than DDR4 at the moment, meaning you can get much more memory for your money. Right now, with 4GB, this system will be fine for esports gaming, but upgrading to 8GB is ideal and you can even add an additional two 4GB sticks on top for a total of 16GB if you plan on doing a lot of multitasking or using RAM intensive applications like video editing. Installing RAM is really simple. With these extra sticks, you just want to unlock the three unused slots, line the notch in the RAM with the notch in the slot, and click it into place. Note that if you're only using two RAM sticks, you want to make sure both are installed in the same color slot, and it's best to look online for optimal RAM placement for your specific motherboard. Once this is done, your RAM is successfully installed. Moving on to storage, most of these systems come with small mechanical hard drives, but because this PC comes with an extra hard drive tray, upgrading is really easy. You can add a larger hard drive if you're wanting to save money, but one of the best ways to speed up a 
system is installing an SSD as the boot and application drive. A 120 gigabyte drive is fine for your OS and applications, but going with something like this 256 gigabyte Samsung drive provides plenty of room for your OS, applications, and a few of your most played games. To install an SSD like this one into the Optiplex's drive cage, you'll need a 2.5 to 3.5 inch drive adapter like this one, which only costs a few bucks and actually supports two 2.5 inch drives on a single caddy. The drive screws into the adapter, then the adapter easily fits in the Optiplex drive sled. Then you can plug the SSD into the SATA power and data, making sure the SATA port on your motherboard you're plugging the SSD into is SATA 3 so you can get the most out of your drive. If your new SSD is of large size than your old mechanical drive, you can clone your hard drive to the SSD using a program like Macroom Reflect, but if not, you'll have to reinstall Windows 10 on the new drive, which I actually have a tutorial about linked in the card above. Then, when installing Windows, you can use the included OEM key printed on the outside of the case to activate Windows 10. Please note, if you purchase a desktop from Discount PC with an SSD, Windows 10 will come pre-installed and the drive will be pre-installed in the system with one of these drive adapters. Moving on to the power supply, installing it is pretty simple. Get a 450 or 500 watt power supply from a reputable manufacturer like EVGA or Corsair. These types of power supplies are constantly going on sale and I even picked up this 450 watt 80 plus bronze unit from EVGA for only $22 and it even has all black sleep cables which is nice to see on a budget power supply. To install this we first need to remove the old unit by unplugging the 24 pin motherboard connector, the 4 pin CPU connector, and the two SATA power connectors. This stock power supply would work fine with a system like this and something like a GT1030, but new budget power supplies are so cheap nowadays, this is a worthwhile investment, and with the GPU I'm going to install, I need supplemental PCIe power. Once all the connectors are unplugged, Unscrew the PSU from the back and remove it from the system. Set the new unit in its place with the fan facing down and replace the four screws securing it in the back. Now plug the 24 pin connector in, the 4 pin CPU cable in, and all the SATA connectors in. Make sure to reconnect the disk drive as even if you don't plan on using it, the system may show a boot error if it doesn't detect the drive. Now before I cable manage, this is the point where I like to install the GPU. The graphics card is what will take the system from old office PC to gaming PC. There are a lot of great used budget options out there right now, like the 700 series from Nvidia and the 7000 series from AMD, like the 7850, 7870, and 7950. Just watch listings for a week or two and you're sure to find a good deal on a budget card. The card I'm installing today is the GTX 760, a great budget 1080p graphics card I picked up for under $60 from eBay. It has a dual fan design and it fits in our case. To install this card, simply open the PCIe I.O. slot and remove the top two covers. Then just align the card with the PCIe slot and press it into place. Then install the supplemental PCIe power connector into place and all of your components are successfully installed. All that's left to do at this point is cable manage the system. The system doesn't have a side panel window so cable management isn't super important, but just bunch up and secure cables together, making sure no cables are coming in contact with fans or obstructing airflow. Once this is done, you're ready to pop the side panel on, boot up, and start enjoying your newly upgraded system. If you do order a system from DiscountPC.com, you can configure it exactly to your liking with the CPU, RAM, and hard drive configuration of your choice. This means all you'd have to do is pop in a new power supply and graphics card and you'll be up and running with a gaming PC in minutes. Thanks again to Discount PC for sending out a lot of the hardware used in this video, and if you want to check them out, I'll have a link in the description down below where you can browse their large selection of refurbished computers with one year warranties and all B plus grade and above condition. I'll also be featuring this system in an upcoming gaming PC build where I upgrade everything to the max and even throw in a high end modern 10 series Nvidia GPU and see how it performs. So if you want to see that video, make sure you're subscribed so you'll be notified when that video comes out. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.